Hello, this is uh, Motor City Spark, and we'd like to introduce our new Yellow Box CDI for the Banshee. This is a battery powered CDI similar to our Black Box, but it has an internal launch rev limiter. A lot of people call it a two step. So, I'd like to go over today what's in it and what you get when you purchase one. Uh, the Yellow Box is a 500 volt CDI, 125 millijoules, with an internal launch rev limiter comes with 16 pre-programmed spark curves, 15 RPM rev limit settings, uh, two LEDs for status and diagnostics, comes with automotive grade quality components, and we had a lot of people ask us to put our CDIs in a kit. So all of our CDIs now come in a kit, and a kit includes the CDI, the CDI pigtail with a five amp inline mini fuse, comes with a Dean's male battery pigtail, comes with an MPS tether. Now this is a really good quality tether. It's made of metal, it's not plastic. It's comparable to a Pingle. Comes with a new pickup coil, so you don't have to cut your old pickup coil out of your harness. Uh, comes with Molex crimp terminals. These are good quality uh, crimp terminals. Uh, comes with TTI double wall glued shrink wrap that are pre-cut. Um, this is the nicest shrink wrap I've used. Um, it makes your wiring uh, waterproof and the crimps will not come loose. And we have a uh, fuel and oil uh, resistant uh, rubber mounting washers that also come in the kit. Uh, CDIs come with a one year limited warranty and they're made in the USA right here in the Motor City. Now the only thing that doesn't come in the kit is a LiPo 4S 14.8 volt battery with Dean's connector. Um, there's hundreds of these batteries out there and we could not pick a single battery that everyone would like. So you'll have to purchase your own battery that uh, suits your needs. So we'll move on to the uh, Spark Advanced Curves. And we the Spark Advance comes in uh, three different groups. And for your reference, this black, thick black line here, this is the OEM at zero plate, and this is the OEM at plus 11 plate. All of our curves are with the OEM at plus 11 plate. You, if you retard the plate uh, to plus 10, all, all the curves shift down by one. So this is the most spark you can get, but you can always uh, reduce those curves. So the top set there is just a, uh, a straight line uh, a uh, spark timing pull out. And I'd like to make a comment on this 10,000 RPM point on the OAM curve. I don't know if that point really exists. Uh, analog CDIs typically continue to pull spark out, so I'm not sure if that point is really in the Banshee OEM CDI. The middle group of curves has a, uh, has a bump in the timing, uh, the mid range and it pulls timing out faster. Now the asphalt bikes we ran on tend to like these curves a lot. The bottom set of curves are the uh, optimal spark curves that are in the black box and I personally like these these curves because they give you a uh, good over rev power. Now the green curve down here it's third from the bottom. That is the black box number nine curve. That is the maximum timing that was in the black box. Um, we got requests from people that they wanted more timing. So now there's three more curves above that that they can dial up the timing quite a bit now. But always remember, too much of a good thing is usually not good. And that includes spark advance. So we'll move on to the rev limit settings. And as you can see, we got our CDI box there. On the left is the spark setting dial under the uh, LEDs. And on the right is the rev limit dial. Now, when you use spark to control RPM, you basically have two options. You got spark retard and skip spark. <clears throat> we tried spark retard and it controls RPM exceptionally well. However, the timing is very retarded. It, it sparks up to 25 degrees after TDC, which causes really late combustion and higher cylinder pressure when the intake port opens, which interferes with your reed valves trying to open. So even though it controls RPM well, it's really not suited for two strokes. So we have a skip spark rev limiter, like all the uh, external rev limit boxes. And when you do skip spark, there's four or five different ways you can do it with offsets and uh, different skip patterns. 
So uh, we've uh, implemented a uh, skip spark that is super fast to sync and it's really smooth. And um, you'll notice an audible difference when you're on this rev limiter. It's just more of a constant hum and that's because spark timing does not change. Now when you use an external rev limiter, you go in through the kill input and it's quite possible that that kill input corrupts the uh, spark timing. So, the, so it'll sound a little more sporadic when you're on the rev limiter. So if we look at the, uh, the settings, we have a zero setting down here at the bottom and that disables all the rev limiting and disables the clutch switch input so it basically turns this yellow box into a black box. Now if we go up to the, uh, the, the, the dirt settings up here um, you know we uh, asked around to a lot of people and uh, you know the lowest RPM they run is 8,000 and the highest is 9,500 and so that's what we have here we have 8,000 to 9,500 and 250 RPM increments give you some resolution in there and we also had a bunch of guys that really wanted a 10,000 RPM rev limit so we put that in there as well so if we go down to the asphalt and street uh, uh, RPM settings now the asphalt racers they typically don't use a two-step because they can't launch and put all that power to the wheels it'll just break the tires loose so they typically do a quarter throttle RPM launch, but you know from pass to pass their launches are very inconsistent. So we have some lower rev settings here that uh, that they can dial in and then just tip in till they're on the rev limit and launch to try and get them more consistency. So it'll take some experimentation on your part to get to get it to work well on the asphalt but there's a possibility here that you can get more consistent launches more consistent 60 foot times and um, yeah everyone that that has tested this uh, uh, yellow box for us we've had um, no issues everybody likes it it works really well and we've had a couple of guys run back to back to back the same number so it's very consistent works really well and it'll be good for index racing as too as well so that's all for this video we will have a a second video on the wiring and the clutch switch functionality so uh thank you for watching today and uh enjoy the rest of the day bye